All right, all right, guys. So welcome to another session of reading psychology. Um, I'm going to just uh, share a few things. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to talk about FTX, you know, the rise and rise and, <laughs> and fall. Not necessarily even that. I'm not, just what you know. What can we even you know uh, you know extract from this? The lessons that we can get from what happened. You know, and uh, I'll ask the question: What you also learned from me? Those of you that went to you know do your research, because I know I posted it in the group link. You know, what can you learn from from such experience? You know, because so many people's money were on that stuff. You know, and they were really doing well at one point. You know, and stuff. Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to talk about, you know, FTX is the fact that you you don't want to get so confident in your not confidence is good, but overconfidence can can become a trap. I, I just hope you get me. You know, overconfident when you 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 start not doing the necessary things, you feel like oh you can avoid those things because you have, you know, you you can you know, you know, they're supposed to have FTX now supposed to have reserve. They supposed to have reserve money in their reserve that in case anything happens, then this money can help them in that period of time. You know, what happened, you know, well, what the function were getting that it was nothing like that. So people's perception was that they had that because that was the normal thing you should, you know, but they went, <laughs> found a way to go behind all those things and, you know, they put a lot of money into uh, one of their trading platforms. Because they had a trading platform they were trading. Obviously, good, you're good enough to, you know, but like I said, going to, the, going to the market, you're either going to lose or make money. Fortunately for them this time around, they lost heavily. You know, when I say heavily, over a billion dollars, billions of dollars in the same market that we look at, you know, they lost a whole lot. And um, like I said, those things triggered people to, you know, to panic and people started selling up their shares of FTX. Said, you know, to the part where people can't even withdraw anymore. You know, it was crazy. It was, it was really crazy. The, the story was that you know uh, Binance CX threatened to pull off his own. You know, I think over two billion he had in FTX, and um, that also resulted to a lot of people also panic buying. You know, panic selling off. You know, and obviously we, we all can tell that that also affected the market. It affected all market, like you know, because people were just you know thinking, trying to you know pull off funds. You know, but when I got really hold of the fact that they took money out of their reserve, money that was supposed to help protect them into trading, I'm like, no, that's that's wrong. You know, that's totally wrong because you you thought you want to solve a problem, but you can end up going deeper in that problem. Just like someone digging their own hole and keep digging their own hole, you need to stop digging first. You know, and and figure out okay, how can we balance? How can we even get our strength? You know, but if you're trying to solve a problem, why you know, creating another problem, it's not going to go. You're not going to solve any problem at all. You know, but unfortunately, the the deal will happen, and it it kind of backfired. You know, and boom, they are they are gone like that. You know, um, some people are also saying that you know has to do with you know just few people. You know, just living life like they please, using people's money anyhow. You know, and uh, obviously, it when there's that kind of thing happening too, there's going to be the high rise and there's going to be the fall, and boom, now it's the fall. You know, so a lot of things like that. You know, one has to have, really want to control yourself. You know, in in this in this in this uh, whole stuff. <laughs> you know, so. You know, so one of the things I said, is it great traders now? You want to work, want to be able to work in silence and let your success make noise. Yeah. You know, um, I think that's one of the things I also learned, you know, when I started making some money in trading, you know, you don't want to just be all out there. You know, you, you want to just make sure you focus on well and just building that your skill or honing that your skill, you know, and uh, when the success starts coming, you know, that will speak for you. You know, so something some people you know used to let you know you know used to need to really wake up from is the fact that they allowed their last trade 
you know, affect their current trade. You know, so you need to promise yourself that you will never let your last trade affect your, your, your current trade. So every new trade, they, every trade, every new trade idea is a new trade idea, regardless of what has happened in the past. You know, you know, so you see emotion plays a strong role. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of partner with with um, you know uh, this company now, AI economy, because now you can also manage your emotions when something is helping you make those decisions. You know, and they but at the end of the day, you still have to work on yourself. You know, you can't unless you don't want to trade, unless you do not want to learn, have that skill set. If I told you you're very passionate about the skill set, you will need to work on your emotions. You will need to be able to take lessons and upon lessons. You know, uh, I'll say the four steps in trading well. And guys, I'm talking about trading psychology, right? The four steps in trading well, you you patience is key. You know, you need to be very, very patient. You need to know how to sit. You know, you wait, you know, wait some more and execute. But then at the end of the day, you still need to learn how to execute. Because some of you see some setups and you wait and wait and wait and wait too long and you miss out. You know, you wait too long and you miss out. You do not want to be that kind of person. All right. You do not want to be that kind of person that, you know, you, you, you're scared to execute. You can't be scared to execute. If you're waiting for something to come to your entry, and every other thing that line, you know, quick counter rules, patterns, everything's waiting for you. You need to learn how to click buy or sell. But the, most importantly, set your stop loss. And let it ride. Regardless of what happens, you hit the sell, it's fine. It's okay. Take it as, take it as you know, that's it. Move on to the next. Right? Because if you don't execute, you don't know if that shit's going to play out. It's only when you execute. Um, the worst thing that can ever happen to any person is to actually see a trade that they are supposed to execute, but because they didn't play all out and they were not part of it, it's not a good feeling. It kind of it also, if you do, if you if you let that happen to you, it kind of also depresses. It's kind of a way of depressing you, or, you know, making you feel like okay, I I was the one that missed out. It was nobody's fault, but this is mine, and you start doubting yourself. All right, so you guys know me, I talk about discipline all the time. And you, as a good trader, you have to have discipline. Discipline is key, you know, and, you know, and, and for me, when I say discipline, you know, you, good trading is defining what you do constantly, what you do over and over again. Not what you do often, or not what you do sometimes. Discipline is, this is what I do over and over and over and over again, right? And you need to create that discipline. So what is discipline? I'm fully, I'm strictly following the strategy. Well, this apply, this apply, this apply, this is what I'm going to do. And you need to do that thing that you say you're going to do over and over and over. You know, trade psychology is something that you constantly have to work on. It's not something that you just know and boom, that's it. You have to constantly work on. You know, you know, just to build trust, you know, what I've said, you know, when you, you know, as a trader, for you to know that, okay, yeah, I've really got game pro progress. I've really, I, I'm in this place where I feel like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Things you look out for. You should you should have a solid routine. You should have a solid routine. You know, you should have a routine. Oh, this is the time I trade. This is the time I do. This is the time I look at the market. This is it's not you know it's not it doesn't happen by chance. You you it's not a solid routine that okay this hard because you're disciplined, all right. Now another thing you you definitely would have have is positive habits. You can have negative habits. Positive habits is key to you make being a, a very good trader. Positive. You, you see, your vibration has to be very high. You know, I think I missed a lot of money just two days ago because of crazy Chelsea. I don't know, many weeks ago now. It's like five days. I kind of feel like it's happening. You know, 
because of trust. I was, I was literally feeling so bad that day. You know, it kind of made me lose out of, you know, something that I was actually waiting for. You know, and that was that made me even feel much better. You know, so you see, I, I'm also struggling. So, so it's not like, yo, coach, you know, you're you're so good. It doesn't affect it affects me too. So I know that you know it's very important to always have a good energy. Keep keep yourself in a high vibration all the time. It's not easy, but it's something that you have to do. I'm telling you, if you If you if you're someone that wants to to take good trades, right? If you want to take good trades, you want to make sure that you are, you know, you're positive, your vibrations is high. Okay. Now you need to be aware of your emotion, you know, awareness of emotion. You need to be also, you know, aware of your emotion. If your emotion is not good, you can't go take tactic trades when your emotion are not is not good. You can't say, oh. I have my mind all messed up and everything, and I still want to go into the market. Nope, you don't, you can't do that. And then, you know, I always talk about you know risk management. You have to think like a risk manager. Okay, what am I going to do if I lose a trade? You go, how far is it going to affect my account? I I I told someone that in my own trading journey, I do not want to lose more than thirty to forty dollars. I start feeling like, no, that's not good enough for me. And I use Google's way. That's why I know I can teach this shit because I'm using the kind of crazy broker that, you know, and I have a pretty good account. I don't want to lose more than 20, see, my, if you, I lost the trade yesterday, today, 20, 20, 20 something dollars, that's it. Cool with that. Let's start going to double, possibly. No, it's not a problem. 85. Okay, fine. No, not 40, not 50, not 60, not 80. Those are rubbish. Those are a long time ago. You know, I've disciplined myself that at most $5 in every trade I go into. That's what I want to lose. So when I start losing maybe $15 in this trade, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not pissed. I'm like, okay. Because I know that once I have a very good trade, everybody knows over 100 or something. Over 100 or something. 200. So if I can lose 25, 25. That's 50. Other 25, so 75. The moment I have one good trade, make the world, you know, over 100, or 200, it covers that 75. I'm, I'm back in profit, even higher profit. You know, so I can't keep it going. So you need to make sure that you you, you think like a risk manager, or you know what you're going to lose. And now, and this is, I think for me, what the most important thing is that you need to think of, you know, you need to think of, you need to be a process focused. You need to be pro process focused than on not outcome focused. So many people going to the trade or going to trading now, they want to trade and they're always only thinking of the outcome of it. If you constantly be that, be that, it, it, it kind of affects your trading, trading skills. All right, but if you can be process focused, it gives you the right perspective, and that builds your skill set and then builds your results. You know, because you're just thinking of how can I get better all the time? How can I be doing? You know, because if you allow yourself to just always constantly think of outcome, you could have a good outcome, and because you're not, you know, you're not focused on the process. You, then you have a bad outcome, and that is it for you. Not knowing that, oh, I could have a bad outcome, I have a bad outcome, I have a bad outcome, and before you know it, boom, I'm having a great outcome, outcome, great outcome. And all this time around, you don't even care about the outcome because you're just focused on your progress. Oh, this was where I was before yesterday. Look at where I am right now. Look at where, you know, I'm looking at, and this is where I'm looking at it's going to be. But I'm focusing on my process, on my journey. I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm celebrating it. And those things makes you good. So, you know, so like I said, I think I posted this on, on one time in the group. I, I said, um, you know, <laughs> some of you will understand, you know, we don't understand that. It's as simple as this, actually. Two steps, you know, I think I added three. You know, I, I added three because I added people that miss out on trade. 
So the first, the first step is control risk. Make sure, like I said, manage your risk. Win next trade. If you take a, if you take a trade, you put your stop loss, you win. That's good. Next trade. Second one, you take a trade, you control your risk, you lose. Still the same approach. Next trade. Third one I added. You miss out on the trade. No win, no losses. Next trade. Don't overcomplicate anything. Don't overcomplicate anything. That's the thing in trading. Boom. Market is my setup. Boom, I love it. Boom, I'm going to take the market right now. Boom. I win it or I lose it. I'm taking on my next trade. So it's constantly, next trade is what is your mind. Like, okay, next trade. So even though you win the trade, that's not the problem. It's the next trade that is the real issue. I'm looking at my next setup. So that's good in the back. I, I can assure you, if you do this repeatedly a thousand times, you will be a very good trader. The reason why 95% of going to fail in trading and 5% are going to be successful is because five people refuse to give up. It's as simple as that. It's not because five people got started making money from the first day they started trading and they, they kept making money. Because naturally, the order, people tend to give up when things are hard. So people would always want to just make focus on easy. And not knowing easy, it doesn't make you good. Easy, do you know what means? Easy gives you, make you complacent. Easy make you succumb to normal, the norms, the 60, the 95 percent of the world that you know they want to go go to go to school, get a job, get married, train their children. They they don't want they, they, they are okay, they're contented, you know. And you know, not not to spread, you know, take shade on anybody working in nine to five. I, I feel I feel you know it's a, for me it's a, it's one good a good system that one has to go, but mentally you can't have that. You know, mentally you can't say, oh, this is all how my life is gonna be. Like if you feel like that's it for you, this entire world just want to get married, have kids, take, take care of them. That's it. Like, what? God created you for so much more. If you don't even want to do much, you know, for yourself, it's fine. That's okay. I understand. But hey, why don't you make it easy for your next generation? Why don't you make it easy for your church? You know, for people that are, you know, you just say, okay, I want to fight uh, this disease. <laughs> I want to be able to sponsor this outreach. I want to, you know, the, this children in the north, I want to take care of like a hundred of them. So I need to go and put in some work in this particular time so I can be able to make as much as much possible because at the end of the day, you need finance to do big things. So, but if once you're selfish, you're just thinking about you yourself. You start feeling small. You start thinking small. You just succumb. People just want to have a job, and that's it for them. In fact, some people don't even think of their family. They just want, you know, they just them alone. Good. Like you can't live a world like that. You would, you would leave, you go away from the world, and you can't even look at so I have this legacy. I have these things I did that people can say, oh, this person. Was a peace setter, you know, this legacy and stuff. You look at people that, you know, they did some important things with their life, you know, and, you know. So, what am I saying? I'm saying that for you to be really good at this thing, you can't afford to just easily succumb to any challenge that we have challenges. Because there are always going to be challenges. In fact, the higher you go, the higher challenge you face. You know, you know, there were some things I never thought I was going to experience, but when I started experiencing that, I was like, wow. <laughs> I didn't even see myself even having this kind of conversation. But look at me today, I'm, you know, have, and because I, I just kept saying, no, the next level, you know, the next level, you know. So what am I saying now? 
at the end of the day, you will find out that 90% traders, you know, that are very unsuccessful in this field and they're still trading in scam. You know, if I find out, you find out the problem is just a psychology, they lost money the wrong way and they gave up. Or, you know, trading hit them hard and gave up. Or, you know, they have not been able to build the skill set, you know, really, really, which is really important. And for you to really good, be good at the skill sets, this is it. You have to be good at the mindset stress. Because skill sets is just 10%. But what will really make you build that 10% is the fact that you know that, okay, if I keep going, I'm going to know this day. And it's, it's mindset, it's, 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 you know, personal development. You know, so I want, I want you guys to, you know, really take these things home and uh, become more, you know, if, if there's anything you don't remember, you know, if only these few things you remember, uh, solid routine, you know, uh, positive habit, awareness of your emotions, thinking like a risk manager, focus on the process, not, not the outcome. I'm telling you, you're going to really do great things. You're going to do, I've seen a lot of people like that, you know, it just transcends, like, whoa, where I am right now. You know, you just made that decision that, hey, I'm going to put my all there. So many people, and what I want to know about trading is that it's not, it's, it's not profiling. You, you, regardless of who you are, regardless of your religion, regardless of whatever, as long as you're committed to the process, old or young, <laughs> meet your pro, you know, whatever. As long as you're committed to the process, the outcome is always the same. You're going to succeed heavily at it. And what I'm going to tell you is that you need to keep going. You know, not, never let any challenges, because if you say there's not going to be challenges, it's a lie. If not even trading your account, there's going to be some very personal challenges that are going to want to affect you and that you will say, okay, I need to stop doing this for now. And if you allow that, because the worst thing that can happen to, 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 to anybody is for them to actually have justifiable reason not to do something that they want, really wanted to do. And say, oh, man, you can't do this anymore because you have to focus on this now. And they let that dream die, they let that skill set that we are building die, and boom, that's it, that's the end. And five years later, they are now doing something completely different from what they really wanted to do at the first place. You know, so at the end of the day, I'm saying for you to be really successful at this, you need to make sure that you give your all to it and you don't stop. You will stop. All right. So, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me. Those of you that want to be part of the, the projects I am on, or you have to DM me. I did a trade, I did a uh, uh, this uh, presentation yesterday, it was pretty good. Uh, if you want to watch the video, if you haven't, you can DM me. I can send you a short video on how it works. I strongly believe that that's something that can help people have a staying power. Because at the end of the day, people really just want to make money because they don't really have much. You know, it's, and it's not, we, we in Nigeria, it's not easy for us. So if even there's a job coming in every time, it gives us that same power that, okay, you know, instead of me taking away from me, you know, all I have, all the time I go in, or, you know, if somebody can guarantee something coming in, I think I should, I'll be able to, you know, effectively build my skill set. Uh, and that's one reason why I power to the economy. And uh, absolutely, you know, so I uh, can, I can be able to, you know, be able to enhance the skill because at the end of the day, nothing's going to be the skill set. No, you went to it. Ain't going to the market or leave them or, you know, or, or go out of it or, you know, sell or buy, children one. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining the call. I really do appreciate every one of you. See you guys to the next training yet again. All right. <laughs> Bye.